cheese eating surrender monkeys this is something that's uh, always interested me this uh, bizarre idea that the French are somehow inferior in terms of military capacity and uh, have a military history to be ashamed of well that's kind of ridiculous although as has been pointed out it's more of a reaction against the French veto uh, used in the UN Security Council against the invasion of Iraq um, that is at play when people use this term than the actual record itself. Now, the historical f uh, record is pretty clear. Um, France in 1940 surrendered to uh, Germany, and the French army was in many ways a superior army to that of the Germans. Their tanks were better, uh, their airplanes were at least as good uh, as the German, and together the British and the French outnumbered the Germans in everything except aircraft. And yet, the French surrendered. Well, that's not the entire story, of course. That was the Blitzkrieg, after all, and no one had had any experience with it before. Um, and yes, the French uh, were defeated uh, in the early summer of 1940, but so were the British and the Canadians and anyone else who uh, happened to be fighting in Europe at the time on the Allied side. And a historical detail that has to be uh, included in all of this is that the Americans weren't even there. While the French and British uh, were fighting the Nazis, the Americans were neutral. And the Americans then went on to recognize the Vichy government uh, installed by Nazi Germany uh, in France. That has to be mentioned. Now. I'm not trying to uh, insult the war record of the British or the Americans in the Second World War equally uh, offensively as the term cheese-eating surrender monkeys uh, might, uh, but some of the things that I have to say about the war record of both countries might sound somewhat insulting. I'm a Canadian, feel free to insult the military history of Canada, such as it is. Um, I promise not to take it personally. But let's just say that um, that is an embarrassment that France fell in 1940. Well, if France has to be embarrassed about that, then the British have to be embarrassed about this. Very embarrassed. Because they surrendered in uh, about 18 months after the fact, after the fall of France, to a hopelessly inferior Japanese army an army that they'd laughed at up until about a few weeks before the fall of Singapore. They easily outnumbered and outgunned the Japanese. In fact, when they finally surrendered to the Japanese, um, post-war records show that the Japanese were pretty much at the end of the rope, and if the British had simply said, no, we're going to fight on, the Japanese probably would have been unable to take Singapore, and it could have been held, but the British garrison there surrendered anyway. What does that say? Are we to assume that the uh, British soldiers there are uh, bully beef or fish and chip eating surrender monkeys? Or uh, I certainly don't think so. Um, sometimes in war you just size up the situation with the information at your disposal and you make your decisions based on that. It did look as though the Japanese were invincible. The same as the Germans looked invincible in 1940. But there were roughly twice as many Commonwealth and British soldiers in Singapore and Malaya at the time. Not only that, they were fighting on uh, British soil, essentially it was part of the British Empire at the time. And they'd had ample time to prepare their own soldiers for jungle fighting because, well, the jungles were their own colonies. Malaya is a big jungle. One would have assumed that the British or soldiers allied to them would have been proficient at it. The Japanese, which in Japan has no jungle, beat them at it. And so it's uh, an interesting double standard there when you look at the two surrenders, the surrender of France and the surrender of Singapore uh, and uh, Malaysia. In the history of the English-speaking world, what's harped on in the fall of Malaya and Singapore is the sufferings of the prisoners afterwards, and the sufferings were horrific. But the military defeat, there's no other way to phrase it, was an abject capitulation to an inferior army. I'm sorry, but that's just what happened. Um, and 
as well, one has to point out as, uh, to those um, people who, because of France's veto in 2002, call the French cheese-eating surrender monkeys, that pretty close on the same time as the fall of uh, Malay and Singapore, this happened. The United States lost the Philippines, also to an army that was militarily, numerically inferior, also fighting on its own home turf. The commander-in-chief of all American forces in the Far East, Douglas MacArthur, fled rather ignominiously, uh, but that has come down as a legend, I shall return, and all that kind of thing. Again, I'm not trying to say that these people that fought the Japanese were cowards, but if you're going to insist that the French were cowards, you'd better be prepared to apply the same logic to the what they came to be known as the battling bastards of Bataan. These people suffered horrifically at the hands of their Japanese captors and during the fighting itself. Um, another little footnote that a lot of people haven't heard of is um, a million Filipinos died in that war, in the Second World War a lot. Uh, they died in milita uh, military action, and they died as a result of a famine um, induced by the war, and f fighting uh, guerrilla actions and Japanese punitive measures against the Filipino population. That's more than the combined casualties of uh, Great Britain, France, uh, sorry, Great Britain, the United States, and Canada. So, does this make the American soldiers in the Philippines hot dog eating surrender monkeys? I don't think so at all. Based on the realities on the ground in the, in the Philippines at the time, it did indeed look as though these people were cut off and hopeless, and that the only logical thing for them to have done to have done was to surrender because their country had more or less written them off. But they did surrender to an inferior army, and they were fighting on their own territory. Take these two examples as, they, as you will. I don't mean to judge the uh, veterans of the Second World War. I wasn't there, and I have no idea what they had to put up with. But the record since then of French military history is pretty interesting as well. The French were defeated in Indochina, but they put up a ferocious fight. Uh, before they were forcibly ejected. They put up a far more determined fight than the American military did afterwards. Uh, but that, I think, has a lot more to do with political uh, problems that the Americans were hamstrung by. And uh, I, again, I'm, I mean no disrespect to any U.S. Vietnam vets. But the French uh, truly went all out in Vietnam, and they were willing to be an awful lot more ruthless than, in, than the Americans ever were, and they still were defeated. The interesting, the most interesting war of all fought by France in the second war, uh, is in the time period since the Second World War has been the Algerian War, if you ask me. And it's a war that is very little known for some bizarre reason outside of the French-speaking world. Alistair Horne, in an interesting book, called it um, a savage war of peace. And that, to me, pretty much sums it up. It was a truly savage, drawn-out war, where, if anything, the French were accused of being too ruthless too determined, too stubborn to see the reality uh, that Algeria was going to get its independence one way or another. The Algerian, uh, sorry, the French military was accused of using torture, of, um, of numerous human rights violations, uh, of fighting with unnecessarily uh, harsh methods against the Algerians. But the end result was, after a long, drawn-out war, the French military won that war. The French were many things in Algeria, but they were not wimps. If anything, they are usually criticized for being too ruthless, too efficient. So I think that not only is the term cheese-eating surrender monkeys offensive to France, but based on the military record, it's also hypocritical and actually uh, wrong. And I won't even bring up um, things like Napoleon or the French record in the First World War, specifically the Battle of Verdun. I don't think any country on earth could have withstood what France went through uh, at Verdun and held 
But I'll leave that to another time or for someone else to tell that story. Thank you.